Hi, I'm Dr. Christina Dervatis, an obstetrician and gynecologist in Newmarket, Ontario. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Talking IUC with Dr. D, my YouTube video series devoted to answering questions about intrauterine contraception. In today's video, we're going to discuss a very frequently asked question in my clinic, and that's the question, what is the difference between a copper IUD and a hormone-containing IUD? So those most common in Canada in terms of the hormone-containing IUDs uh, would be uh, Marina and Kylina, uh, which contain levonorgestrel. So patients are often coming to the clinic and wondering which IUD to choose, uh, and they have a number of questions. And so today we're going to discuss some of the differences between these two options uh, versus some of the similarities. I'll actually start with some of the similarities between the two. Both the copper and the levonorgestrel IUD are a similar small size. They um, have a similar insertion process and a similar risk profile for the most part. Really the major difference between the two uh, is the hormone uh, content of the levonorgestrel IUD. But in terms of actual physical size, insertion process, um, uh, overall risks, excluding any hormone related uh, side effects or risks, um, and also contraindication. So who can or can't have an IUD? Um, it's relatively the same. There are just a few uh, exceptions, uh, and I'd refer you uh, to video number eight, which talks about who can or can't have an IUD. There are a few exceptions where um, a patient may be able to consider a copper IUD, but should not consider or should steer away from a hormone-containing IUD. One such example would be a patient with active hormone receptor or progesterone receptor positive breast cancer. In that uh, rare situation, uh, the patient could consider a copper IUD, but should not consider a progesterone-containing IUD. But for the most part, there's very few patients who um, are contraindicated to using progesterone, and for that reason, there's really very few situations where a patient um, has to choose copper over hormonal IUD or vice versa. Now, in terms of the differences, the number one difference that you'll see between the levonorgestrel or hormone-containing IUD compared to the copper IUD will be the effect on your menstrual bleeding and your menstrual cycles. Now, Marina and Kylina tend to overall have a beneficial menstrual side effect profile in that most women will have less heavy, less painful periods. And in 20 to 30% of patients, uh, you may not even have a menstrual cycle because the progesterone is acting to thin out the lining of the uterus. Now this compares to a copper IUD. The copper IUD does not have this effect. And in some patients who choose a copper IUD, they may find that their menstrual cycles might become slightly heavier with uh, slightly more cramps. Now, this isn't every single patient who has a copper IUD, but I do routinely warn patients um, to expect potentially heavier cycles and possibly more menstrual cramps if they're going with a copper IUD. Now, both the Marina and Kylina and also the copper IUD, all of these options will have an initial, quotes, adjustment phase of bleeding where you may expect some irregular um, sporadic bleeding in the first four to six weeks after insertion. Uh, and that's normal and will get better over time. So no real significant difference between the two options there. But long term, you will see with Marina and Kylina, or any levonorgestrel containing IUD, a tendency towards a lessening of menstrual bleeding, a lessening of menstrual cramps compared to the copper IUD where you might see the opposite. And in fact, we actually use um, the Marina IUD for treatment of heavy and painful menstrual cycles, uh, even in women who might not require contraception. So menstrual bleeding uh, and effect on menstrual cycles is definitely the number one biggest difference between the levonorgestrel IUD and the copper IUD. 
The second difference um, between the two IUDs uh, is obviously going to be the hormonal impact, not just on the menstrual lining, but potential hormonal side effects. So of course the copper IUD does not contain hormones and so there will not be any hormone related side effects. While the Marina and Kalina IUDs uh, or the levonorgestrel containing IUDs do contain a hormone, very little of that hormone ends up in the bloodstream or is absorbed into the bloodstream. So other body or what we call systemic uh, circulation uh, hormonal side effects are very rare. And we discussed this at length in video number 10, where I talked about what are the possible hormonal side effects of a levonorgestrel IUD. Um, and so I'd refer you back to that video for further details. Um, but again, the overall emphasis is that the hormone related side effects with a levonorgestrel IUD tend to be fairly uncommon. The third difference between the uh, levonorgestrel IUD and copper IUD is the actual mechanism of action. Now, both work similarly in that they create what we call a hostile environment uh, in the uterus uh, to sperm. So they create an environment that uh, discourages sperm entry and sperm fertilization of the ovum. The levonorgestrel IUD has an additional uh, beneficial mechanism of action when it comes to how it actually prevents pregnancy in that the progesterone thickens the cervical mucus and that's actually the primary mechanism of action for the hormone containing IUD. Um, and in addition, the progesterone thins out the lining of the uterus um, and that can also uh, create uh, a situation that's less favorable for implantation. So again, I'd um, refer you to one of my previous videos for further details. Uh, in video number nine, I discuss how do IUDs work and go into greater detail about the copper IUD versus the levonorgestrel IUD. Um, but the bottom line is because of those few additional hormonal mechanisms of action uh, for preventing pregnancy, the levonorgestrel IUD is just slightly more effective than the copper IUD with a two per thousand chance of pregnancy uh, compared to a six to eight per thousand real world or um, actual use rate of pregnancy with the copper IUD. But overall, both IUDs are very, very effective at preventing pregnancy compared to other contraceptive method options. The last issue I'm going to talk about in terms of differences in cost. Uh, now, this may or may not be a consideration for a patient depending on whether or not they have independent drug plan coverage or whether or not they're covered by um, a federal or provincial uh, drug plan. Uh, but in someone who doesn't have drug plan coverage uh, where uh, cost is an issue, the copper IUD is less expensive than the levonorgestrel IUD, where the copper IUD, as of the timing of um, releasing this video, the copper IUD usually is in the range of less than $100 versus uh, Marina and Kylina, uh, averaging close to $450 uh, right now uh, in the Canadian marketplace. Now, one thing to keep in mind for both, if you're paying out of pocket for an IUD, consider the fact that this is five years of contraception potentially, depending on how long you leave the IUD in place. If you weren't using this IUD, you'd be paying for another method of contraception during that five-year window. So when you look at the overall cost-benefit analysis in that um, light, most patients will find that uh, whether it be copper IUD or levonorgestrel IUD, uh, that overall it uh, is a smart financial decision and a good investment for them uh, because the uh, contraception is long acting and up to five years of duration. So just to summarize, when a patient's trying to decide between a copper and a levonorgestrel IUD, I ask them to consider a number of questions and certainly I consider these things when I'm counseling a patient about the options and weighing the pros and cons with them. So I ask them to consider their menstrual cycles and what they're like already. If a patient already at the start has heavier or more painful cycles, 
I definitely would want to steer them towards the levonorgestrel containing IUD, which could potentially actually help them with those symptoms versus the copper IUD, which might have a potential to, uh, to worsen those symptoms. However, if a patient has no real menstrual problems or issues, uh, light cycles, there's not really um, any concern in considering both options, but definitely you need to factor in what your menstrual cycles are like to start. Um, I ask patients about their past medical history to rule out any potential contraindications to a progesterone containing IUD versus a copper IUD or rule out any contraindications to IUD use in general. I uh, ask patients if they happen to be concerned about hormone use. Uh, a lot of patients will say, well, I really want to stay away from hormones. I ask patients to explain to me why that is and what it is about uh, hormones that they're concerned about. In many instances, uh, and I discussed this in my uh, number 10 video about hormone side effects, in many instances, the perception that the patient has about potential hormone side effects may not actually be true. Either they're thinking of hormone side effects that don't have to do with the progesterone, um, might be estrogen related, um, which is in the birth control pill, but not in the IUD. Uh, they might be based on hormone experience that they had with an oral uh, preparation of a hormone, which is much different than the um, experience or side effect profile when you're talking about uh, IUD released hormones. There's very um, big differences in terms of actual amount of hormones in the bloodstream. Uh, bottom line is I try to understand what it is about um, hormone use that is making the patient uncomfortable with the idea of it and to uh, definitely address any potential myths or misconceptions that there might be uh, about hormone side effects related to levonorgestrel IUD use. And then the last thing that I go over with the patient, again, is to discuss issues of cost, uh, to explore what their drug plan coverage is, and to... Um, factor that into the equation um, in terms of whether or not the patient can afford an IUD or if they can, are they wanting to invest in the levonorgestrel IUD because of the potential menstrual benefits? So we go over that in detail. So those were just a few points regarding the differences between the copper IUD and the levonorgestrel IUD. I hope this has been helpful and I really do hope that when you're making a decision about IUD use, uh, that you're using factual based information and weighing all of the uh, potential benefits and risks and using information that you can trust uh, and that's not based on misconceptions. That's what this whole video series is all about. And so I'm just going to end by reminding you that in less than the time that it took to watch this video, you could have had an IUD inserted. The whole process takes about five minutes uh, and gives you five years of worry-free contraception. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.